Ladies and gentlemen, today we bring you something you've all been waiting for. Please give a warm welcome to MFALS Terminology. Our first chapter, The Setup. MFALS Software. Pretty sure you know something about this one already, but let's have a little look what it's made of. The MFALS software consists of several components. MFALS Desktop, MFALS Admin Tool, Server, and Clients. We'll get to some of these components a bit later. Vault. Vault is a location where the documents and other objects are stored. You might have several of them, or just one, and it is configured to your company's needs. The information can reside in external repositories or databases, which we'll get to in a bit but it's all managed in the vault. User Well, you are a user, aren't you? A person with a login account can be a user in a vault or several vaults, and user is the one that matters when it comes to such things as logging activity in the vault, permission settings, and administrative rights in the vault. In mFiles, users store user-specific settings, user history, and they can perform administrative tasks in mFiles. Login account. Login accounts are used to authenticate users to mFile server. You can have a login account on the server and be a user in a vault or several vaults. Server. It's the physical location where the document vault resides. It may be a cloud server or an on-premises server, or you may have a hybrid solution where you have both. Client A client is your device you're using mFiles on. It can be a phone, a tablet, or your laptop. There is also the web client, but that of course requires a device to work. External repositories External repositories are external data storages integrated with mFiles. Information in external repositories can be accessed and edited in the mFiles user interface with the help of so-called connector applications. So, let's summarize in this picture what this first chapter is all about. Now let's move on to the second chapter, the structure or mFiles underneath the hood. Object and Object Type Every piece of information with its own metadata card stored in mFiles is an object. There are several kinds of objects in mFiles that are created by using object types. Some examples of an object could be, for instance, customer, project, and document. Class Every single object in mFiles has to be classified when saving it into mFiles. By selecting the class on the metadata card, properties are filtered accordingly. Some document classes might even have predetermined workflows associated with them. Class Group Class groups can be used for grouping classes, for the end user to be able to find the proper class easier. As an example, you might have a class group called Meetings that includes classes like Memo, Meeting Notice, Agenda, and Meeting Minutes. One class can be found, if needed, in several class groups even though it is only one class. Only the object type document can have class groups. Property Properties are those things on the metadata card you choose from to describe what you're saving. Oh, and if you don't know what a metadata card is, it's this thing right here. It's a card that is associated with everything stored in the vault and, like I said before, is used for describing what you're saving. We'll talk more about metadata in the next chapter. Value Properties have values. Value for a property can be set by choosing from a list, choosing a date from a calendar, or writing in the value field. Now let's summarize this chapter in this picture.
the third chapter is about the user interface. Home screen. Here you can find almost everything you need. You can see the name of the vault you're currently working in. You have the search bar, the quick views, the pen tab. This is where you make the magic happen. Files versus documents. In short, outside of M files, we have files, but once they are transferred to M files and given metadata, they become documents. Metadata. Now, this is probably the most important term to remember. You remember the properties we were talking about earlier. Metadata is descriptive information that you use to define the objects in M files, so everything you write or choose on the property fields on the metadata card is metadata. A good example of using metadata in your everyday life could be if you want to describe your new shoes to your colleague. You might tell the size, the color, or at least say that they're pretty cool. Let's move on to our fourth chapter to cover some of the key features. Document collections. They are collections that consist of individual documents, also known as collection members, each with its own set of metadata. You can think of it as a physical binder where you gather different kinds of documents together. The collection itself has a collective set of metadata individual from its members. These member documents can be accessed through the collection or as an individual document. Multifile document. Multifile documents are pretty close to the document collections, but not quite the same. If document collection is like a binder, then multifile document is more like stapling together documents that make sense to be grouped together. For example, a draft of a contract and a signed version of it. Relationships. You can use relationships to indicate that this piece of information is related to another piece of information. For instance, an offer could contain an offer document and a related price listing along with a company brochure. Permissions Every object in the MFALS vault has its own permission settings. These settings determine who can read, edit, and delete objects in M-Files. There are automatic permissions and dynamic permissions where you can manually set who can read, edit, and delete objects. Views Views are basically saved searches based on metadata. Every time you open a view, M-Files will search for all the objects that match the view's metadata search criteria. Grouping levels. Grouping levels are used to sort information inside of you into categories. You could also refer to them as metadata-driven categories. An example of the use of grouping levels could be if you want to categorize documents inside of you by customer or by country. Workflows. Workflows represent document life cycles according to real-life processes. For example, if you have a document that needs to be reviewed and approved, you might benefit from a review and approval workflow, where the draft of your document is first sent to the reviewers and after they have given their comments, either comes back to you to be edited or goes to the approver, who will then decide if he will be merciful and approve the document, or if he'll send it back to you. There you go. Quite of an extensive list of terms. If you want to learn more about them, Go ahead and check another video and I will be waiting for you there. See you soon.